everyone. I am here to do our service puppy haul, I guess you want to call it. Basically, what you need for a service puppy. It's okay, June. Shh. June, is, June is in his crate right now because he ate a nap and he's been up since probably six or seven. Um, he usually has to go out about that time. And he needs a nap because he's in his mischievous mode. And also, you should always, if you're crating your puppy, which I always say is a good idea, June, you're okay. Um, I would say, you know, it's really the safest method. June, shh. It's really, the, really the safest method. If you don't have your eye on your puppy 100% of the time, um, it's really the best thing that you can do for your puppy so that they don't get into trouble. And right now, I don't have my eye on my puppy because I'm making video. So he's in his crate because that's the safest place for him. And it's comfy. He has a bed in there. He has a towel that we brought him home with, which smells good. It smells like him and his sisters and brothers. And he has a couple of really safe toys in there. So he's, he's good. So um, today I'm going to be going over some of the things that you need for a puppy. Now, Dune is a service dog, so the things that he needs are a little bit different than some other puppies. He's also a red golden doodle, so when he's big, he'll be probably about somewhere between 50 and 70 pounds. We're not really sure yet. Um, he's 12 weeks old, and he weighed in at 22 pounds at the vet on Monday, so we'll see. Um, so I'm going to be going over some of the things that Dune uses, that I like, that I don't like, um, and we have a new order from Petco, and I'm going to be opening that up so you can see the different things that I ordered. Okay, so let's start with the things that we already have. This is Fetch Magazine. Um, it is from Pet Plan which is a pet insurance company. You should always get pet insurance for your puppy, especially if you're not rich. Um, if you're like me and you have a part-time job because I have a disability and it's hard for me to keep a full-time job. If something happened to Dude, I wouldn't re really be able to help him very much financially because I don't have the means to do that. And a lot of people don't. People don't have five grand to spend on a dog if their dog swallows a squeaky toy like my parents' dog did. And luckily, they, they had that kind of resource put away, but most people don't. Um, so pet insurance is always a really great thing. Dune is covered by Embrace, and so far they seem okay. Um, we haven't really had, we haven't really needed it, but it will be there if we do need it. And I think I pay like 30 or 40 bucks a month for it, but there are cheaper plans and more expensive plans. So this magazine is by Pet Plan, um, but basically... It just goes over like all these really cool tips and tricks for your dog and what you need to know like um, if an accident happens or you know how hot it can be for them you know what's safe what's not safe what happens to their paws if they walk on pavement um, hot pavement first aid if something happens so these kind of magazines are always great um, sometimes you know if you have Something like Pet Plan, you can get it for free, and if not, you can always subscribe to one for information. So there's that. Next thing, moving on. These are puppy pads. These are actually the dog training pads. Um, these are for, there's a collie on it, so they're for bigger dogs. I think they're like over 50 pounds or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. But anyway, there are 50 pads in here, which is a lot. And we got them when we first got Dune, just in case. Um, but Dune, shh. We never really ended up using them very much. We mostly used them when we very, like, the very first time when we first got him and introducing him to new rooms, just in case sort of a thing. But he didn't know that that's where he was supposed to go. Um, there's a lot of controversy about them. So we only use these now when he's in the car or, you know, when we're going somewhere that he's not familiar with. And we use it more of a mat than a puppy pad. He's, we don't teach him to go to the bathroom on it, but it does keep him safe. Um, and if he does have an accident, it's not a huge deal. It's easy cleanup. 
And these are also great for like putting under water dishes and stuff when your puppy's getting into trouble. So I would definitely recommend these for stuff like that. Um, as I said, there's a lot of controversy on puppy pads, so do your research if you want to use them for actually potty training. Dude, shh. You're okay. You're okay, I'm right here. He's, he's literally like three feet away from me and he can see me and that's why he's barking. So, but he's fine. He just needs to take a nap. So, um, the next thing I have here is a training lead. And this one is a 20 foot lead. I think it cost $8 and we got this one from Chewy.com. And it's, it's really, it's a nice one, but it's simple. It's simple. It's like 20, 25 feet, something like that. Um, and we use this in the park so he can run around and play, but we don't have to worry about him, you know, getting free, getting himself into trouble. He's still controllable. And I like these a lot better than our retractable leashes. They're a lot stronger. Um, and I think it's just, it's a lot easier to kind of keep tabs on him. Dude. I don't like talking to him when he's in his crate because it teaches him that it's okay to whine. Um, but it really would be nice if he would be quiet. So the next thing that I have is a Kurgo travel bowl. If you're doing, if you're taking your puppy anywhere outside of the house, even, you know, if, if it's an inch away from your backyard, you need a travel bowl, at least one. Um, and you should at least, you should always carry a water bottle with you. Dude! Chill! You're fine! Right here! Silly puppy. Okay. So, this is the cargo water dish. Um, we use it for food and water, but we use it a lot when we're going to the park. It's a pretty decent size, so when he grows, it'll still be good for him. Um, but the thing I like most about this dish, a lot of people get the silicone, like, collapsible dishes. And I think those are kind of silly, um, because they're not, like, they are travel bowls, but they still are in the shape of a bowl. Even though it collapses, it's still the shape of a bowl. But these, these are really cool because they go down really small. So what you do is you fold it in. I forget how much I paid for this, like five or six bucks. It was cheap. And you fold it in, and then there's a zipper on it, and you just zip it shut. And it zips into this little triangle, but it can it can get even smaller than that if you need to stuff it in like a pocket or something. But it also has a carabiner on it, so you can just, you know, attach it to him or attach it to yourself or your backpack or whatever. And keep going. The other thing we have is a gentle leader puppy harness, and we're just slowly training him to use this now so that he gets comfortable with it. Um, it takes a long time for dogs to get comfortable with things like these, but um, I would definitely recommend doing some research on it if you have a puppy that pulls or if you are like, if you have a dog like Dutton who's gonna be a service dog, they need to learn how to heal properly very quickly. And this is a nice tool to have um, if your puppy pulls really hard or if you, you really need that extra oomph without wanting to hurt him. Definitely pick one of these any day over a training collar, a prong collar, stuff like that. It's not good for your dog. So pick something like this and contact a trainer to teach you how to use it. So the next thing we have is June's harness. He wears this anytime he is in the car and he has a car seat in our car. Well, it's not like a car seat. It's like a seatbelt for dogs. And this harness goes on him to keep him safe. So that if I were to get into an accident, or if I had to slam on the brakes, Dune, it wouldn't pull on his neck, so it wouldn't hurt him. And he would not fly through the windshield. He would be safe. Um, and if he did fall, or you know, if the seatbelt did pull and catch him, it wouldn't hurt him in any way. So this harness is for the car, and it's really easy. It just, this part goes over his head, and then his legs go in between this, thing here and then we just clip this part over his belly and it's really simple and we use this sometimes for walking too because this ring here in the front it's a no pull harness so it doesn't pull on him which is something that we like so the other thing I have here is a training leash and this is a leather one so we don't leave this on June when he's around the house it's only for walks 
And it's kind of heavy duty, and we use it for training too. Um, I think it's like 15 bucks on Amazon. So it's a, it's a decent leash. I don't have any problems with it. It works for us. And then attached to it, we have our little fire hydrant with our potty bags. Just in case we're out on a walk, you always want to clean up after your pet. It's a responsible thing to do. As gross as it is. Um, this one, I think is we got it from Walmart. It's like $3. And it top just pops off and you pop the bags in and you can go. So you should always have one of those on hand. Now, um, we also have this other leash. This is mainly for me when I have problems with my disability and we're out in public. We haven't used it a lot lately because June is still in training and he pulls, so this is not a great leash for that. Um, but I forget I forget who it's made by. I got it on Amazon. But basically, it is a hands-free leash. So this part clips around your waist, just like this, and that's it. And it has a pocket for your phone with some headphones. And it also has a little pouch over here for training treats in case you need them. And then this part, which is a really strong leash, um, it attaches to your dog. A lot of people use these for running, but it's good for people like me when we need a hands-free leash somewhere in public. And the, the thing that I like about this one, too, is that it has handles here and down here as well, just in case, you know, you would have to make it shorter or whatever. Um, you could always, like, clip the lead down at the bottom and do something like that, so it's it's kind of a little bit more convertible. I've been looking into getting one of the um, ones that are made on Etsy, the hands-free ones. I forget what they're made out of. Paracord, that's what it is. Um, they're very expensive, so um, I want to see how this one works first, and if this doesn't do it for us, then we'll try something else. Um, these are puppy boots. And these are just cheap ones. I, I want to get the rough wear ones eventually. Um, but we got these off of Amazon for like $15 or $20. And they match they match the best. June, it's okay. Shh, you're okay. And these, um, basically, they're really nice because they have these, they're almost like sneakers on the bottom. So when it's hot outside, he can go outside and it's not a big deal. It will all hurt his feet. Um, clearly, you know, dogs, they breathe through the paws, and these are not super breathable, so I would never leave these on him for very long. Um, but if we do have to go somewhere and I need him, it, it'll be easy for him not to burn his paws and still go with. And, I mean, they're okay. They have these two straps, and it does have, like, this nice little tongue, but they are, they kind of have, like, this squeeze material inside. So in the future... Um, we're definitely going to be getting other ones. But these, I bought these right away because we want to train him how to wear them. And at 12 weeks, it's easy to train for things like this. Um, so we just do one paw at a time, little by little, just a little bit over a, a couple of weeks. And hopefully soon he'll learn how to wear them when we need him to. And they come in this nice little bag, which is cute. And you can just take it with you. So we have those. Another thing you will need for your puppy is food and water dishes. But Dune is a very fast eater, and puppies can get bloat very easily, which is a condition where dogs eat too fast and they get very sick. So we got Dune this swirly food dish, and you just put his food in here and he kind of licks it all out. Um, and Dune, he's just scarfed down his food in like 10 seconds. I bet it's probably even less than that. And that's really bad. So what we were doing is we were either feeding him by hand um, and not using the bowl, or we would, you know, put a little bit in and then make him wait and then put a little bit more in 20 minutes later. So with this one, we can put it all in at once, and it takes like 20, 30 minutes for him to eat all of it. And it's like less than a half a cup of food at a time. Because right now we feed we feed Doom three to four times a day, depending on the day. Um, so. You should always, you know, you should look into other options if your dog is a fast eater. But you need food dishes. We have a whole bunch scattered all over the house, um, but that's one that I like. So another thing that you can get is training books for your dog. Um, whether your dog is going to be a service dog or whether it's just a puppy, um, you should always have, you know, you should always have resources 
we use positive reinforcement training and this this book it doesn't really go over that very much it talks more about why dogs do the things that they do but that's a good thing to have too so i would definitely recommend a book like this moving on okay other things that we have this is the gentle leader box that that head collar came in so this is what you want to look for <coughs> And then moving on, we also got him these. These are Kong snacks, and I kept I kept the um, container just in case. These are for puppies, so they're specifically for puppies, um, which means that they have only a couple of ingredients in them. And then these are the actual snacks. We have an ant problem in our house, so we keep all of his treats like really secure and well. Um, this one is 11 ounces, and I got it from Chewy.com, and it wasn't, it wasn't very expensive. He does have a Kong, um, I don't have it up here, I think it's actually in the screen. Um, so, it, it's, it's just a normal Kong. Another thing you'll need, um, let's do this first. This is Out Severe Urine Destroyer. Um, you should have some sort of product like this. We actually haven't even had to use this yet. It's still completely unopened. We've had June for almost four weeks now, and he still has not had an accident in the house. At all. So, we're, we're okay with that. If I never have to open this, I'll be happy. But if you have any kind of a puppy, if you're getting a puppy, you know, if you've had your puppy for a week and it hasn't had an accident, you still should have something like this, just in case. Especially if you're like us and you rent. Because you don't want to get caught with that. And then with that, I also have some heavy-duty scrub sponges, just in case something happens. Um, we can use the severe urine destroyer um, and just scrub it out. So another thing I got for June that we have not used is one of these retractable leashes. Um, I've, there's a lot of controversy with these, and this one does not seem very strong because we got it from the dollar store. It was only like $1.49. So I have not used this, and I probably won't use this, but again, it's up to you what you want to use for your puppy. So, and this, this is June's basket. Um, we also have more poop bags, just in case. And then another thing you want to get for your puppy, if you have a yard or you live in town, um, is a tie-out cable. And we got June a 30-foot one, and it's for large dogs, so he'll grow into it. And then this one, it just, it's for pets up to 80 pounds, and it works for him. It's, it's a little bit big for him now, um, but it's, it'll work for him in the future. So that's, that's a good option to have. And then we also have, we have another training collar in here. It's just, it's just a regular flat collar. Dude, shh, shh, you're okay. And then this is the collar that we brought Dune home in. It's really tiny. So this, this does not fit him anymore. Um, but I keep it because it's sentimental. And then this is another harness that we have that is bigger than the harness that he's wearing now. So he can wear this when he gets a little bit older. And this is from my old dog, Riley, who was not a service dog. He was just an Irish setter and a very stubborn one. Um, so... It's kind of sentimental for me because Riley was really my dog. Um, and he was a great dog. So we'll, we'll definitely use this when he gets big enough. And then the last thing in this basket um, are training treats. Now, when you have a service dog, you're going to be doing all kinds of crazy training. <laughs> June and I currently do a half an hour to an hour a day, depending on how much he'll let me do with him. And these are blue buffalo blue bits. They're soft, moist training treats. And this is the tasty chicken recipe. And this is this is a nine ounce bag, and we got this about a week ago, and you can see we're already about halfway through it. So we've been supplementing with the natural balance dog rolls, which is actually it's actually just dog food, but it's all natural. Um, and we supplement with that now because you know it's not good to give your dog too many treats. And I don't one of these bits is 3.5 calories for your dog, which is, is a lot. Um, 
But the thing I like about this is that um, it's it's made in the USA, and Blue Buffalo, they're really, they're a good company. This is the same company that he his dog food is from, so it's really, it's a good option for your puppy. So I would definitely recommend something like this. He likes these, and they're small, and they're shaped like hearts, which is kind of cute, um, but it doesn't have to be these. It can be anything. So I usually, I give him different kinds of treats all the time because we always want him interested in something different. So that's all of that from that basket. So we'll just throw all this back in here quick so that we have room for other things. And then I also have a couple of other things that we use for Dune. Mainly, the next thing is his service puppy vest. So this is a service dog in training vest. I got this from Amazon for like $25, I think. And it's made by Doggy Styles. And I like it. It's not bad. Um, it's, it's good for what you paid for it and for a training vest. And it is adjustable, which is good for him because he's going to grow quite big. So this is good for his first vest. Um, we will definitely be getting a different vest in the future. So this one, it has the service dog and training uh, Velcro attachments on it. And I like that you can take these off and put them back on, um, you know, if you want to wash the vest or if you, you know, if your dog is going to be wearing this for a long time, then eventually it will become a service dog. So you can change them out and I like that. It also has a pull strap and a steering here and this reflective piece on the front. And this, this is where his head goes, and this is, goes under his belly. It works okay. Um, so yeah, I would, I would recommend this vest for what it is. So dude hasn't really worn his vest very much yet. He's been in training for four weeks now since we've gotten him. Um, and he has worn it once or twice in public, but he's not a big fan of it um, because he's not used to it yet. So we slowly introduce it to him, and if he loves us, put it on him, then we do. If he doesn't, we just go without it. So that's okay. And then we also have, you should always get a treat jar, um, especially if you're like us. We have an ant problem in our house, and I don't know why. Um, we have ant traps, we have all different kinds of things, but we can't spray anything because we have rabbits that run free, and of course, dune. Um, so... We, we use these kind of tree jars. I got this one from the dollar store for a dollar, and I use this one upstairs, and I have these all over the house so that we can leave his treats where we can easily access them without having to worry about the ants getting in it because that's gross. And treats are expensive. I mean, I don't want the ants to eat my dog's treats. So we have that. The next thing that you need is toys and a toy box. Um, we have two toy boxes. This is Dune's upstairs toy box, and this is Dune's downstairs toy box. And both of these I got for the dollar store for a dollar. But it's it's good for him because eventually we're going to teach him to clean up his toys to help me with my disability. Um, so I don't have to pick them up all over the house. And this, this is kind of his home base where all of his toys are. So he knows if he's looking for something, this is where his toy is. So... This is his downstairs toy box, and there are all different kinds of toys you can get for your dog. Dune, he really seems to like the stuffed toys, um, but my parents' dog swallowed a squeaker from a squeaky toy when he was eight months old. Um, I think I mentioned that. So we, we do let him have the squeaky toys, but he's only allowed to have them when we're watching him. And I think that that's, that's probably a good rule of thumb for every toy, except for those really indestructible ones. Always watch your dog. It's just the reality of it. So this is a stuffed ladybug that he loves. It squeaks. Um, it's not the best quality. We got it from Pet Supplies Plus and it was on sale. I think it was like seven bucks, which is still expensive for a dog toy. Um, but we took him to the pet store and this was the only toy that he wanted out of the whole store. So we were like, what the heck? So we got him that. He also has this rope that we got from the dollar store. It's like a it's almost like t-shirt material we keep this outside he's allowed to play with it out on the deck um same thing watch him with it this is a aspca dog frisbee 
but it's like um it's really tough so it's something that is more like a chew toy than a frisbee i think if i threw this it would probably hurt him um and he has a really hard time trying to pick it up because you know this is like his tiny little mouth and then this is the frisbee so same thing this one is a jw squeaky ball and squeaks i'm not gonna squeak anything today because he's in his crate and if he hears me squeaking He's going to go crazy, and he is already unhappy that he's in his crate, and he wants to be out here with me with all the toys, which I don't blame him. So we have this as well. And also with his downstairs toys is this rope, and we use this in the car because it's safe for him. Right now, it's not something that he can chew. Eventually, it is something that he will be able to chew apart. So I feel pretty safe giving him this toy when I'm driving. I don't feel like he's going to rip it apart while I'm driving. Um, but it's a, it's a nice one. He likes it, and, you know, he can tell that he's been at it, which is a good thing. So there's that. And then we also have downstairs, this is a treat toy. Um, it's a busy buddy. And you open it up like this, and it does come completely apart. Um, and you put all of the, all of his kibble in there, and then you close it back up. And then he has to like push it around and get the kibble out of it. And it's a really good working exercise for a dog that he has to learn to work for his food, which is something important that we need to teach June. Um, he always is going to have to work for his food because he's a service dog. So that's something that we're trying to teach him now. And then we also have this tiny little Nyla bone and it's, it's an okay size for him now. It's an extra small. Um, I am not a huge fan of this. I don't like it. Um, mostly because it's not a good size for him and it's also like it's peeling like this little stuff if you can see it it's peeling like icky stuff and I don't like giving that to him so this one I haven't really given to him we got these from Walmart and they were really cheap but I might actually contact the company because I don't think it's supposed to peel like that so um, the only thing I don't like about those is that I have to watch him with them because he's getting too big for them, um, and I'm worried that he's going to swallow them. So I never let him have those on his own either. But he does have a bigger Nyla bone around here somewhere. Yeah, this one. It's peanut butter flavored. This one is expensive. It was like 15 bucks, and it's just like a medium Nyla bone. Um, and he doesn't like this one as much. Like, I think it's it's because it's made for dogs and not puppies, so it's it's tough. But I feel comfortable putting this in his crate, and I know he's not going to chew it because he can't chew this. I mean, it's like indestructible sort of a thing. So, I mean, I'm sure if you gave it to a really destructible dog, it would eventually, but it's, it's not like that. So, we have that. We also have this Kong Wild Knots teddy bear. This is his, like one of his totally favorite toys. Um, so, he has this all the time. But this toy, the back of it, at the seam it came apart so my mom sewed it back together um but it was an expensive toy um but it already had a scent on it but so we just saved it but he loves it he has a moose like this too and the thing i like about it is that there's no stuffing in it it's just a knot like knotted like a rope so he likes it and then we also have this rope for him which is still big for him um, same thing, we do not allow him to have this when he is on his own, it is only for tug. And the reason that he needs to learn to tug is so that he can open things like doors and refrigerators, stuff like that. So it is important for him to be able to play with ropes, but we don't want him to chew this. And these little pieces can get like wrapped around his intestines and things like that. And that's not something that we want for Dune. Um, so supervision, always necessary. Same thing with squeakers. Um, this is a blue squeaky toy. Again, I'm not going to squeak it. Um, tennis ball. It's pretty self-explanatory. And he also has this orange thing. It's like a boomerang, but you can see he's been chewing this one apart, too. This one is from Pet Supplies Plus, too. So I don't know how I feel about their toys. They're, they're not coming, like, they're coming apart pretty easily. Because he hasn't spent a lot of time with this. So, I don't know, maybe I could try and fix it and salvage it, but it was really cheap, so I don't think it was meant to be chewed, so it's not, I guess, their fault. Another one of these. And then this is another ball that you can put his kibble in, and he, he knows how to get it out of this. He loves this one. And then we also have 
up here a comb and a brush. This one is from the dollar store. It's by the wall. Um, and you can see it's it's really just it's just a comb that the top comes out, which I actually don't like because even though I assume it's for fur or for easy like getting it out and getting small places, I don't like it because it comes out and it's fur when I'm brushing it and then I gotta chase it around to get it off. And then I don't know who this one is by. Pet champion, maybe? It's a very tiny little thing. He hates this. He hates it. So we've been really trying to work with him just to let us touch him with it. He's he's scared of it. So we just keep working on it. But he's a puppy, so he's scared of everything. So that is all of that. And then the last thing that you will need for your puppy is either a bed or I recommend towels and blankets like this one. They do make puppy blankets, but honestly, I mean, it's kind of, I feel like it's kind of a scam because a blanket is a blanket, and why pay $30 for a puppy blanket when you can get one from Walmart for two bucks? So, this one we did get from Walmart, I think it was a dollar or two dollars, and I mean, it's an adequate size for him, and we just put this in his crate. Um, he was not allowed to have beds right away because puppy is going to chew a bed. Let's just be real here. If he likes stuffed animals and a bed is stuffed, you do the math. So we don't give him dog beds like that. Um, and we can't put them in his crate because a crate is supposed to be a safe place. It's supposed to be somewhere that he can go, that he's not going to get into trouble. He's not going to hurt anything. Like he's not going to swallow anything. And he could hurt himself with stuffing from a bed. So he didn't have a bed in his crate for three weeks. He had a towel and this blanket. Now, he, we've trained him how to use a bed, that he knows what a bed is, so now he has a crate bed, like one of those flat ones in there, um, and it does not have any stuffing in it, and we found that one on Chewy.com as well, and he loves it, um, and that's safer for him. So again, I would not recommend giving your dog a dog bed if he's a puppy and you have not trained him what a bed is and how to use a bed. Uh, because if not, it, he will chew it apart, or she will chew it apart, um, and that's just, it's not a safe thing for your dog. So, um, those, that's pretty much all the stuff that we have for Dune, and then I'm going to make a separate video here where I'm unboxing this big, giant Petco box. Um, so I will link that in the description below so that you can see both videos. So we will see you in our next video.